Hey guys, and welcome to my preview of General Nazgrim. Nazgrim is the 8th boss in the Siege of Orgrimmar, and he actually looks like an extremely fun fight. So pretty much he uses loads of warrior-esque abilities, like stances, rage, that kind of thing. And on top of that, he has a whole bunch of ads, because, you know, he is the general, he calls the shots, and he can, uh, he can summon loads of dudes. So the first thing I'm going to do is cover the general abilities. Actually, no, that's not the first thing I'm going to do. first thing I'm going to do is just explain a little bit of the format. So firstly, I am going to talk about his general abilities and just the stuff that people have to worry about. Then I'm going to talk about his stances, then I'm going to talk about his rage mechanic, and then the adds. So overall, this will hopefully let you piece together a good picture of what the fight is like. So first we have the general abilities of the boss. Now the first one's called Sundering Blow. This is pretty much your tank swap mechanic, but it also ties into rage. So he does uh, 600k damage to a tank, and it reduces armor by 10% for 60 seconds. Now on top of that, it will generate the boss 5 rage initially, but then it will generate an additional 5 rage for every stack on the tank. So not only is it about how long does your tank survive, but it's also about how many, you know, how much rage do you want to let the boss generate, because rage is a serious mechanic in this. So the next thing is called Bonecracker. Now he throws a mace at a player and it will do 50% of their H, sorry, it will reduce their HP by 50% and do 30k DPS to them for 30 seconds. So I think the healers are really going to have to watch out for whoever has Bonecracker, especially if they're an important player like a healer or something like that. Now, like a warrior, he uses a whole bunch of stances, and these do definitely seem to influence the, the pace of the fight. So the first one's Battle Stance, it's pretty simple, he generates 1%, uh, sorry, 1 rage per second. So, not too much special there. The next one's called Berserker Stance, he does um, his damage taken and done increases by 25%. Now this seems like an interesting phase, and it actually seems perfect for heroism, because you may need the extra healing that heroism gives, and the extra damage will be capitalized by the 25% extra damage taken. So I could see maybe using hero heroism once, you know, for the first one, and then having to, say, perhaps stack healer cooldowns or something like that for the subsequent ones. Though it does seem like something that could take a lower geared or sort of ill-prepared raid and um, take them down. The next stand, final stance, is defensive stance. So he reduces all of his damage taken by 25% and deflects damage from the front. When he takes damage, he gains rage, so you really need to be careful that you're not hitting him too much, or else the rage will increase to the point where he can use his big, scary abilities. So, I'd imagine this is probably the sort of time you want to take care of the adds. Now, we've been talking about rage a lot, and now I'm going to talk about the actual mechanic. So, there are a large number of ways that he gets rage, and a lot of these are influenced by how you, you know, how players do the fight, like how much, uh, how many tanks that actually that happen, that sort of thing. Now, he will always use the most expensive ability he can, and once he uses a rage ability, he will have a 15 second cooldown before he can do another. So, the first one is Heroic Shockwave. Now, this costs 30 rage, and it makes him leap at a player, which does 300k damage within 10 yards. The ground will, um, there'll be like loads of cracks in the ground between uh, him and the player, and they'll sort of fan out in star shape, which perhaps maybe looks like a smaller version of what goes on with Iron Quan. Now these cracks will eventually blow up, I think a few seconds later, doing 400k damage to players, but importantly he gets 3 rage for every player hit. Now this seems like something that uh, is marginalized by ba basic uh, raid awareness. You really shouldn't be getting hit by stuff like this, so you know the people who sort of get to, who get to the 8th boss shouldn't have any problem with that. Now the next one's called Korkron Banner. Now this costs 50 rage and he throws the banner down that generates 3 rage for Nazgrim for every uh, attack that his adds do. So if you don't nuke that banner down fast, his rage will increase rapidly, it'll spiral up and it'll, you know, let him use those abilities which are really going to sort of kill your raid if you don't manage them right. So one of those abilities is called Ravager. It does, it costs 70 rage and he basically throws a sword called Ravager. It spins around the place doing 400k damage to players and giving him 3 rage per person hit. So you really don't want to be hit by this, you really, you know, you don't want him to do this, so if you can delay Ravager for as long as possible, that's definitely good. Now finally, his next thing is called War Song. This is a rage wipe mechanic, basically he gets really pissy and screams, and it does 75% HP to all players, meaning you're all a bit dead. So there's the rage mechanic, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this previously, but he will only do one per 15 seconds, so you know, about 15 seconds is when he'll probably build up rage for the next ability. Now on top of this we have adds, and the adds honestly they seem like the sort of thing where they're fine as long as you stay on top of them, but you really would need to stay on top of them. So the first adds are called Iron Blades. Now they blade storm out the place, and when you take them under 20%, they do last stand, which just increases their health. 
They don't seem like a massive threat, they don't seem like they do a massive amount of damage, and also it's Bladestorm, you can just stand out of it, so it should be okay. Now the next ones are called Arc Weavers, these are the mages, they do Arcane Shock, which increases their magic damage done by 25% for 10 seconds. Their other ability is called Magi Strike, and it does a small AoE that puts dots on the player. Now it doesn't seem like much of a problem, but you don't want Arcane uh, Shock going up too much, so it should be interrupted. And these guys do seem like they'd be a little bit more dangerous than the Iron Blades, so I'd recommend killing them first. And the next one should be great fun, the Assassins. They start stealthed and they'll put an Assassin's Mark on a player. When they do that, they try to backstab them, so they need to be behind. Now this does 500k damage over two hits, it, you know, it could very easily just one shot a player. So the Mark player really needs to be sure they run away or don't, you know, face the right direction. And uh, these Assassins can be unstealthed by stuff like flares, so yay, Hunter Utility. Now the next thing is War Shamans. And these will put an, an Earth Shield on ads, which heals them for 5% of their HP when hit. Obviously, you don't want to do that while Earth, Shield's, Earth Shield is up. They also have a Chain Heal, but the really interesting thing about this Chain Heal is, is that it increases the healing it does as it jumps from target to target. So I'd assume that you probably want to you know, try to keep your ads spread out so the healing, uh, the healing chain doesn't go too crazy. And the final thing they do is Healing Tide Totems, which heal the ads, and you want to nuke those down. So overall, this seems like a pretty awesome fight. It looks really fun, and I think the key way to win is Rage. You need to make sure to get tank stacks that work for you that keep his rage down. You need to make sure players aren't taking unnecessary damage from his abilities, which will increase his rage. I think that as long as you're really good at keeping the rage down, and that your basic you know, mechanics, raid awareness are good, then you should be fine. But it definitely seems like raid awareness is important. You know, there's ads like the Assassins, the um, the Iron Blades, and then his various rage abilities, which are, you know, they punish players who just sort of fall asleep at the keyboard. So that's been it for my preview. I hope you liked it, and uh, please let me know what you think of the boss. I think he's really fun. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.